This chapter is on bones and skeletal tissues. So the first topic that we are going to go over is skeletal tissues. So it's important for you to first realize that cartilage is not the same as bone. So the human skeleton initially consists of joint of just cartilage when we are developing and then that cartilage in utero so as an embryo begins to be replaced by bone and then by the time we are born we still have skeletal cartilage that is left over the skeletal cartilage is highly resistant molded cartilage tissue that consists primarily of water and it's important to know that it has no blood vessels, which we call avascular, and it also has no nerves. So cartilage itself is made up of important cells, which are called chondrocytes. And I want you to remember that site, the suffix, means that it is a mature cell. Also, the prefix chondro itself means cartilage. So when it ends with blast, like a chondroblast, if that is the suffix, then that means that it's an immature cell. So as we know, in anatomy and physiology, we can learn a lot just by dissecting the words into pieces and parts. So these chondrocytes are in, encased in small cavities called lacunae within jelly-like extracellular matrix. So the basic types of cartilage are shown here, the first of which is hyaline cartilage, and that is the most common type of cartilage and we have a lot of regions of our skeleton, as we'll see coming up, which have hyaline cartilage. So it provides support, flexibility, and resistance. It's the most abundant type. And we have some subtypes like articular cartilage, still hyaline cartilage. It's just called that because it's in the joints. Costal cartilage is in the ribs. Respiratory cartilage is in the larynx. And nasal cartilage is the tip of your nose. The next type of cartilage is called elastic cartilage. And the unique thing about this type of cartilage is that it has the ability to expand and recoil. So similar to cartilage, but it contains elastic fibers in its matrix. So the two main places that we find it are the external ear as well as the epiglottis. The third type of cartilage is fibrocartilage, and it has thick collagen fibers, which, which gives it a lot of tensile strength. So it's in places like the menisci of the knee as well as the vertebral discs. These are the discs that you hear a lot of people have damaged at some point in their life. So if somebody has a herniated disc, it is damaged to this particular um, region, and it's kind of classified as a shock absorber. So our next slide is going to show us this diagram, which shows us where each of these are located. And I want you to remember that the axial skeleton, as you'll be learning about more in the next chapter, has 80 bones. And the appendicular skeleton has 126 bones, which makes for a grand total of 206 bones, which I'm sure many of you already know are found in the human body. So let's look at the most common cartilage first, the hyaline cartilage. And we can see that it is located in the nose here. So that's the nasal cartilage. There's thyroid cartilage, which is in the larynx region right here. There's another type, which is inferior to that, called the cricoid cartilage. Then there are cartilages in the trachea. 
And if you point your head to the ceiling, your chin to the ceiling especially, and lean your head back and touch your trachea, you can feel these tracheal cartilage rings, which help to keep it open. There's also other hyaline cartilage, which is in the neck and thorax in the respiratory tube, in large bronchi, and they start to decrease as we go to smaller and smaller tubes within the lung. And then in the ribs, there is costal cartilage, especially between the ribs and the sternum where it touches. Within the joints, there is articular cartilage of a joint. And we see another example of that in the knee region here. The next type of cartilage is the elastic cartilage. And the two main examples of that are the external ear and the epiglottis. It's very important in the epiglottis especially, as this kind of acts like a sphincter to close off the trachea when food is going down the esophagus. So it doesn't go down, quote, the wrong tube. The third and final type of cartilage is the fibrocartilage, and we see that as the shock absorber in the inter intervertebral disc, also in the pubic symphysis, and in the meniscus, which is a pad-like cartilage in the knee joint. So it's important that you know the different examples of cartilages and where they are found at. So let's compare the differences between cartilage and bone. Cartilage is surrounded by a membrane called the parachondrium. Again, please take a look at the base of this word chondro. So when you see chondro, likely it's going to be referring to cartilage. Bone is surrounded by a membrane called the periosteum. And osteo has to do with bones, as we'll see later on in the chapter. Cartilage is avascular, so it's got no blood vessels or nerves, whereas blood is very vascular, has blood vessels and nerves throughout. Cartilage has chondrocytes. Remember, those are mature cartilage cells that are in lacunae. And in bone, there are osteocytes, mature bone cells, in lacunae as well. Cartilage has a flexible extracellular matrix, whereas bone, as you probably would guess, is that it has a rig rigid extracellular matrix due to inorganic calcium salts. The extracellular matrix of the cartilage is made by chondroblasts, Remember, when it ends in blast, it means it's an immature cell, whereas in bone, the extracellular matrix, the organic part is made by osteoblasts. That would be the living part. And then finally, cartilage develops in a couple different ways. It develops um, with, by increasing in width, and that's called appositional growth. And then increasing in length is called interstitial growth, whereas bone only increases in diameter, which is appositional growth. So our next slide is going to show us the growth of cartilage. So we already know that it grows in appositional growth as well as interstitial growth. Appositional growth again, is going to be an increase in width. And again, it's both cartilage and bone, as we saw in the previous slide. Whereas interstitial growth is going to increase in length. And these chondrocytes within the lacunae are going to divide. And they occur in what's called the epiphyseal plate. And that epiphyseal plate is more commonly referred to as the growth plate, which then transfers once it matures um, into the epiphyseal line. 
So I'll go ahead and write that down for you as well. So it's called the epiphyseal or the growth line.